Hi everybody and welcome to another YouTube video here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we're exploring another piano VST. This one is from Vienna Symphonic Library. It is the Yamaha CFX with their Synchron engine and man oh man this one's impressive. I'm really really glad we decided to cover this uh, because this has been quite a legitimate musical experience for me. The plug-in is intense, it's complex. The strategies and techniques they've used to capture these instruments in the halls are just extraordinary. It's a visceral experience diving into this plugin. Really, really happy we did. Uh, if it's the first time that you have joined us here on the channel, we'd really appreciate if you hit subscribe and the notification bell particularly and especially if you find it useful and entertaining throughout. Please feel free to comment as well. So without further ado, let's get started with the Vienna Symphony Library, Yamaha CFX Library, right away. I have been sampling VST piano plugins for several weeks. Uh, we're doing this from a home base setup because of course we are still in the midst of a COVID shutdown uh, where we are right now in this present uh, time, but we have certainly found ways to still stay very uh, involved and uh, curious about all things pianos. Uh, and the VST plugins proved to, to be just such a perfect category to dive in and explore a little bit more. Uh, and we're probably eight, seven, eight, nine in to this little adventure and finally got around to the Vienna Symphonic Library's Synchron Piano engine uh, and their Yamaha CFX sample set. And I was reminded for the very first time um, and possibly even for the first time uh, behind any kind of a digital piano um, or digitized piano experience, um, of the very first moment, and every single piano player out there probably has one of these moments, but the very first moment that you got to sit down behind a nine foot concert grand in a fairly large space and just let it rip. And there's a good chance that it was a music festival or some type of an audition or something and there's one on stage, you've gone, you've played it, you've done your thing and maybe you're hanging around after uh, the engagement is done and you creep back on stage and you sit down, it's an empty room and you just start thunderously playing these lower octaves and these higher triads and just this gush of euphoria comes through your body hearing sound like that for the first time. You must have felt that. I certainly remember uh, the very first moment that that happened to me. And this is the very first digital experience I've ever had that truly reminded me of that moment. In my personal opinion, highly subjective, but in my personal opinion, uh, so far in my exploration, this Vienna Symphonic Library uh, has the most accurate representation of the acoustic experience of playing a nine foot piano in a large space that I've ever had. There's something that goes beyond just the tone of the instrument. It's it really is rather hard to describe, but when you he when you read through the intensity of what they've done to produce these libraries, 
you start to get an appreciation for the level of sophistication that's going on here. We are talking about tens of thousands, tens and tens of thousands of samples that get loaded into each and every preset when you call this up on the screen. Um, and this is actually a, a, a great, um, well, I don't know if it's a great measure, but it certainly was a very uh, good uh, kind of canary in the cage. I knew I was dealing with a different beast. I've been keeping a lot of these sample libraries on a 7200 RPM external hard drive uh, with a USB 3 connection that's transferring in and around about 113 to 115 megabytes a second. For nerds out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you can't play this plugin on that hard drive. Not only is it not playable, but just to load the sample sets into the DAW that you're using or into the host that you're using takes over five minutes for one preset if you're using a traditional uh, kind of rotary hard drive. So I had to move a whole bunch of stuff around just to make sure that I could get it onto an SSD that had a thousand megabyte per second uh, transfer rate. And then it loads up in about 25 to 30 seconds. And for every preset, we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of about five gigs, four to five gigs worth of samples. Um, and I'm not even playing the super duper set because you can buy each one of these Synchron libraries in two categories, the standard and then like the on steroids. And even the standard one comes with more samples, more mic placements, more mixing options than any other uh, piano VST plugin out there that I have come across to date. I can't even imagine what it would be like to have the uh, kind of the ultimate package. I don't even remember what they call it right now, um, but it's, it's close to uh, like $700 just for one single piano. So this is what we're talking about. This is the ilk of uh, plugin that we're dealing with here. And I'm gonna let you, you hear it uh, right now um, so I can kind of stop my pontificating um, and appreciate what it is that I've been hearing. They've got these presets organized into three categories. And a lot of these have completely different sample sets. So these aren't just mixing presets. These are calling up different samples at the same time. And they've also got these kind of quick pick ones down here. You can see just above where the keyboard is virtualized, concert, intimate, player, pop, ambience, mighty. And let's just pick player for a second. You can see we're loading up whew, about four and a half gigabytes. 71,000 samples that's been loaded. And this is what we get. It's so sensitive that 
I found when I first sat down with this, I immediately edited the touch curve. It was just too dynamic. Uh, and I'm playing on an RD2000, that's what's triggering this for people who may have been interested. It's a fairly accurate MIDI output, but even with that accuracy, I still felt that it was a little bit all over the map. Uh, and so I was going into the edit and I was adjusting the touch curve sort of right around there, bringing it down to something like this and I found it solved my problems. Another note, for people who were ever wondering truly why a high polyphony mattered that much, if you look on my screen right here, you'll see zero voices down in the lower right corner. That refers to uh, how many samples are being uh, played or processed simultaneously. And in essence, what we would often refer to is what the polyphony usage is uh, at any given time. And I'm just going to play, um, what is this? Eight notes with the pedal down. So just by combining those natural sustains, I'm already peaking over 100 polyphony.
it's just exhilarating to play it. And this is where you get into the conundrum. Is it the plugin that's thrilling you or the piano that's been sampled or the room that it's in? Because it's always a combination of those factors, right? And at first I was thinking, this is gonna be the only library we pick up to sample uh, or to evaluate or to experience the Vienna Symphonic Library engine. I don't think that's possible. I think I now have to know whether it is the techniques and the strategies and the processing behind the plugin that's creating this effect or whether it's the piano. I gotta know. So uh, it looks like the Steinway D274 is the other one that uh, uh, most people comment on uh, and talk about as being uh, the other, you know, one of the other really truly versatile ones. There's also a new Busendorf for 280 uh, Vienna Concert Edition um, that might be interesting uh, to sample as well. But certainly with this Yamaha uh, CFX, uh, it's got a slightly strident treble to it. Um, that I have a feeling that the Steinway is probably a little bit rounder on the, the immediate attack of that. But my goodness, the accuracy of how they've captured the magic of a nine foot piano in a truly beautiful acoustic space. Let's run through some of these presets because otherwise I could be here all day. So here's concert and this is a room mix. That's what I mean about the sensitivity. Every time you switch between presets, unless you're saving it as your own preset, it's going to reset to that flat velocity curve, uh, which is just a little bit much for me. Um, intimate. We've already heard player, pop. Whoa. That's, that's there.
Almighty. And then you get into concert-centered room mix, which is the last one of those room mixes. Then you get the Deca Tree multi mic presets. These are also pretty intense. Cracked five gigs on this one. and so on and so on and so on. I want to show you uh, the mix control because this really gives you an idea of the insane level of control that you have over this. It's like you're at the live session. So um, unlike say something like the Garretton CFX where they've done a great job of capturing the room, you've got your sample set, but you don't have a lot of control over those samples uh, once they're in there. You can't really pan them, you can, uh, the only real panning you have is the option of flipping the audience perspective uh, with the player perspective, which is more or less a pan effect. Um, but nothing that compares to the type of control you have in here. So the grayed out parts here is the part that uh, we don't have access to, because I just wasn't ready to spring the 700 bucks. Um, you know, nobody gives these uh, to us uh, for free to review. We just buy these with our own money uh, so that we can, you know, sh uh, dig it for ourselves, get into it, uh, and share a perspective with you. Uh, so we weren't quite ready to do that. So the ones that are lighter are the, uh, the microphone recordings that we have. So we've got Room mix, which is not on right now, uh, close one, mid one, main, and then main, uh, main center, I believe is what that refers to. Uh, and you can see the insane level of control. You've got delay control here, which can sort of augment your sense of space or help to manipulate it in a different way. You've got decay control, uh, pre-delay, uh, obviously your overall level, uh, your dampening, um, and then individual pan control for every single one of those things. It's just crazy. So you can uh, customize to your heart's content until you really truly find the one that just does it for you or obviously project specific stuff. So totally getting rid of your close miking. You can hear it. just close in the far, which is kind of an interesting combination. It's a little cleaner, but doesn't have quite the width.
So that is the type of control you get in the mix. And then the edit is a little more nitty gritty. You have individual note control when it comes to dynamic range, tuning, and volume. So you've got one note that's just feeling like it's sticking out a little bit, uh, or perhaps you want to, there's prepared piano stuff that you're uh, experimenting around with. You certainly have that level of control. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's a small thing, but not a small thing. So many of these plugins, the hosts are fixed in terms of the size that you can have it within your DAW. This, you actually get zoom, which is, why don't more people do that? So helpful. So helpful. Um, a few other things about this to know. You do need a key, a USB key. Uh, unlike the iLock stuff, this has not been uh, kind of virtualized yet. You still need a key. They send it to you. It's like $13 or something like that, and it gets to you for in two or three days. So that's not that big a deal. Uh, it's just a little bit odd in 2021, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, downloaded the whole thing. It installs really quite easily uh, and quite quickly. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's just... I was shocked. Now, honestly, this blew, this one really did kind of blow me away um, because I felt like the bar had been set really quite well with plugins like the Ravenscroft uh, 275. Um, there were uh, there was a lot that I liked about the Garrison CFX, for example, and you know finding some nice functional uses for even some of the native instruments. But man, when I got to this one. Like I said, I don't think we're going to be able to stop just with the CFX. I think we're going to have to do at least one more so that to understand how much of this is the room, the plugin, and the processing, and the recording techniques versus the piano. Because uh, without a point of, point of reference, it's just so hard to tell. All I can tell you is that this makes you feel that tingle, that magic of sitting behind a real nine foot piano in a space for the first time and just truly feel feeling the power behind that instrument. I mean, not hearing it through process signal, not hearing it through, through this. I don't know how they did it, but when you listen to this through headphones or with monitors, you feel the power of a nine foot concert grand. So if that's something that sounds like an interesting addition to your studio, I haven't played anything like it. Thank you so much for watching. Really, really appreciate you stopping by uh, for another video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Um, please subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen or found it useful. Hit that notification bell. We're always coming out with new videos uh, and would love to have you back. Comment, let us know what you thought as well. Take care and have yourself a great day.